What is up everyone? Welcome back to WRX Garage. Today is absolutely gorgeous out. It's nice and sunny. It is a nice Sunday morning, but uh, today we are finally opting for something that a lot of people say you absolutely need to do if you have any kind of aftermarket parts on your car, and that is doing an e-tune or a pro tune. So I've been running the Cobb Stage 2 tune on my car, um, the off-the-shelf map, 91 octane uh, with my Grimspeed catted down pipe. And I have been getting a little bit of knock issues and I decided to uh, get rid of those and just finally opt for the e-tune. So um, I'm waiting for a pro tune to do all the rest of my parts. Um, I'll be doing TGV, um, EGR, unplug, boost controller, intake, all the rest of the good stuff um, and doing a pro tune all of those all at once but for now just to tide me over i'm gonna get a nice e-tune to make sure the car is running smooth it's happy everything's doing well and safe for the meantime while i have this downpipe on there or the j-pipe so what goes into an e-tune well i'm going to go through the entire process uh, for those of you who are wondering i bought this e-tune from ambot tuning and usually I am a huge proponent of Bren tuning up here in the Northeast. Um, he's probably the best out there. Uh, Ambot um, definitely has a really good name for himself as well. And uh, he's probably the most um, cost efficient um, tuner out there. And uh, from what I heard, he has very consistent, good, reliable tunes. So um, he's who I went with for my e-tune. Um, and then for my protein, I'll probably go for Bren. Uh, they actually do a dyno, so that'd be a fun video. But let me, uh, let me get these windows open. It's hot. The way that uh, Ambot goes through his specific tunes, um, there's a couple different stages um, that you need to do. First off, you're going to be downloading the map he sends you, the base map, of course. And this is pretty similar for most e-tunes process, but you receive the base map, you plug your AP, your access port, into your computer, you're going to load the map onto the access port. Next, you're going to actually flash the map. And then usually there's a long list of parameters or data logging instructions you receive from your tuner. Uh, from Ambot specifically, uh, what I'm doing is I'm flashing the map, I'm about to do that right now. If I loaded it onto the access port. Um, I'm going to flash the map and then I'm going to set up all of the gauges that he wants the ALV, ALVCS that we can, AVCS, that we can watch to make sure that um, the timing is picked up by the ECU and all of that. Um, we're gonna wait for our coolant temp to come up. And then uh, we're going to go into our data logging parameters and select the entire list that he requested. Once that's done, we're gonna be doing a couple different logs. First one is going to be a nice idle log, very simple. Second one's going to be cruising around town. Um, Pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Just not really getting into throttle and any any boost, just casual driving, normal driving. Um, if you go into boost a little bit, it's fine. And then the last one is going to be a, a watt log. A one watt log is what he calls it, and that's going to be just uh, second gear um, from, uh, sorry, third gear from uh, 2000 RPM to red line. So I'll probably do it on, when I'm pulling onto the highway. Um, so um, that's about it. I'm gonna flash it and then um, just give you guys that experience. So there it is, Ambot tuned, KD, those are my initials, and 93 octane. So I'm gonna go for that. And I'll go through the flash process. I've turned it on, I've done all the, the correct parameters, and uh, what I'm looking for here is waiting for this uh, uh, coolant temp to come up to 160. And then I'm waiting for this AVCS here, the minus seven to go up, go through its cycle to minus six, minus five, four, three, two, one, zero, and then positive one, two, three, four, five, and then back to zero or one. Um, so I'm just waiting, letting the car warm up and letting it do its thing. So we've let the engine uh, idle for quite a while now, and we have our AVCS value minus one, sitting between minus one and zero, uh, which is what Ambot uh, asked to wait for. Um, coolant temps are up. She asked for at least 160, and that should be 160. It should be right. It should be good. Um, idle sounds nice and smooth, and he asked for a four-minute idle log. So what I'm doing 
Let's see if I can do it with one hand. I'm going to have a timer on my phone for four minutes, nice and simple, and start log and start the timer. Next step is a cruising log. Uh, sorry, not a cruising log, a driving log. So there's four I need to do today, um, different stages. One is idle, second is cruising, so just driving around normally. Um, under normal conditions for a four to five minute uh, time period. So same thing, I'm gonna set my um, timer on my phone for five minutes. I'm gonna start driving, I'm gonna go get groceries. Uh, throughout this entire process, you're allowed to drive your car, just don't do any watt pulls until uh, it's ready. So um, I'm gonna do that um, and then just make sure I time it correctly, and keep the timer on my phone. So I'm gonna do that and get back to you guys in a second. Two down, two more logs to go. Um, car's nice and warmed up. Um, I have one which is the cruise, cruising uh, data log, which is in fifth gear, hold RPM for about five minutes. So same thing, setting the timer on my phone, um, and then I'll do that. And that's not really interesting for you guys to watch, but the fourth one you guys might want to watch, I'll film that, or I'll try to from here, because the camera moves around a lot, but oh well. Uh, and that's the third gear pull 2K to red line, and then just backing off throttle and letting it decelerate. So I'll be doing that on the highway safely and securely. So um, let's go do that. Let's hop on the highway, get in fifth gear and just hold it. And uh, yeah. All right guys, here we go at 2K RPM. So we are a couple of days later. Um, we finally received the um, revision number one, so V0.2 uh, from Ambot. So flashed it onto the car, running smooth, no issues. Um, we're just letting it warm up for a little bit, waiting for our ABCS uh, to come back again. And um, yeah, so for this one, we're just doing another one watt pull. So he tweaked a couple things. And uh, so we're doing another third gear pull, second, uh, sort of 2K RPM all the way up to red line. So um, we try to film it again without the camera falling over. Yeah. Slow down a little bit. said that I'll probably hit that uh, feedback knock anyways but um, damn still at one which is good fine knock is fine feedback knock minus 4.2 AFRs look good boost 18.81 um, I thought I'd get a little more than that but maybe we're waiting on the next revision or something like that but overall this 0.2 tune um, feels a little bit better for sure than the last one 
So I'm um, gonna send this data log to him and then we, I will uh, get back to you guys with the next revision. So um, this process has been taking a bit longer than I originally thought it would, but um, I guess that's the, the price you kind of have to pay for, um, you know, a quality tune that's gonna be nice and reliable. So um, I'm currently on revision number six, um, revision off that, that initial uh, bass tune. Um, so I'm on my way out to do a um, another pull. All right, 30 miles an hour. I have a new camera mount, so hopefully. time for me to get this out and uh, you know, I've just been crazy busy but um, we finally have the final tune from Ambot which is amazing and uh, let's go over a quick drive and I'll tell you guys all about it so with any kind of e-tune let's talk about for a second before I go full you know go through the entire tune itself let's talk about why somebody would get an e-tune compared to any uh, something else. So why would you get an E-Tune versus an off-the-shelf tune versus a Dyno tune from a, like a Pro Tune? Um, for our cars, and I, I'm sure this is pretty similar to other platforms as well, um, for our cars, essentially, you have those three options. You have the off-the-shelf map, and I'll link a video here in the top right corner um, for the Cobb off-the-shelf map review. And when we say OTS or off the shelf, uh, we're talking about a tune that's been made for a specific part that you are putting on the car. So if you have a Cobb intake or a Cobb downpipe, there's a Cobb stage one or stage two off the shelf tune from them that you can flash onto the car and it'll work. The issue with those off the shelf tunes is that they're designed for the average car. When you're looking at the numbers behind what you're driving so whenever you're driving essentially what a tune is is a giant table of figures that goes over um, different boost pressures timing air fuel ratios all these different uh, logging parameters um, and a tune is the input of some of those specs all the way through at different engine speeds, at different RPM, and different gears. Um, so essentially, with an off-the-shelf tune, all those values are going to be slightly different than what is optimal for your specific car because those numbers are based on an average car um, for our cars. And essentially, those numbers are going to be very conservative and the power numbers are going to be very conservative to try to be uh, to keep every single car that that product is going on to try to keep it safe so when you're moving up from an off-the-shelf tune to an e-tune the biggest difference is that all those values that I was just talking about that are in those tables that dictate the timing the, the spark the uh, amount of fuel and the amount of boost the amount of air all those things, um, all those values are going to be customized to your car specifically. And despite you know manufacturers trying their best to make sure every single car is exactly the same, different things are going to happen. Different oil changes, uh, different kinds of oil people put in their cars, the temperature of their, their climate, uh, how humid the air is over time that they're driving in, all those factors affect um, 
how an engine does over time and, and, and specific things that wear differently, etc. So every single car is going to have an optimal tune that is just slightly different from another one. Um, so that's why an e-tune is going to be better than an off-the-shelf tune. So that is essentially, that applies to two different things. It's going to be better because it's going to be more reliable. You're going to see less knock events because it's designed for your engine and your parameters and the environment that you drive in. And two, it's, you're also going to see more power for the same parts from an off-the-shelf tune. Because remember, off-the-shelf tune, they can only go, they have to be really conservative with their power numbers because they're trying to make it applicable to any car or any model car, the same model, any Subaru WRX that you put that exact tune onto. So, hey, what's up, Subi? Um, so, that's um, the, the benefit of an E-tune compared to an off-the-shelf tune. With a dyno tune, you're taking it a step further where your car is actually being mounted on a dyno jet at, at the tuner shop and they're able to see all those numbers and the data logs and the feedback from the tune they put onto the car live. With an e-tune and what I just did with Ambot was I am sending him those data logs so he can look at them remotely. So as you can imagine, the process is just is delayed way more significantly than it would be with a protein where it could be a couple hours versus an e-tune, which for me took about two to three weeks, I believe, to get. And that was through 11 revisions. So that was 11 times I had to um, flash his tune, the revision of his tune, take the data log, do the, do the, the want pull, um, and then send him the data log so he can look at the tables, look at the numbers, and try to get every single number as optimal and efficient as possible for my car. So that's where we are now. That's the difference between the off-the-shelf, the e-tune, the e and the, the Pro-Tune. And this is actually perfect timing because I have a nice little straight road here. Oh, it's just so smooth. The power delivery feels great. The car doesn't hesitate. The throttle response is perfect. By no means is this a race car now. It's just a stage two downpipe. That's the only part I have on the car. But I'm hitting target boost perfectly almost every single time. The throttle is mapped. The, 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 the peak the torque and peak uh, horsepower are shifted upwards in the RPM curve. And the car just feels smooth. And like I said before, there is going to be a slight power difference between an E-Tune and an OTS. So I'd say maybe 10 horsepower, maybe 15, around there. This is a 93 tune. So essentially I can't run 90, I cannot run 91 with this. Um, I can't run, you know, any special octane boosters, like, you know, good high quality octane boosters. I can't run that, those with this tune. You need a separate tune for that. Um, so with this 93 tune, power estimates are around 270 to 285 to the wheels, which I think is pretty fair for, I'm talking about horsepower. I think that's a pretty fair evaluation. Um, if you think about it, these cars make 215 to the wheels stock, uh, maybe 220 depending on weather and things like that. So um, overall target boost, I think is a right at, uh, just below 21 PSI, so it's at 20.8, I believe, um, is my target boost, and this car just feels amazing. Um, we did have a small hiccup recently um, after the final tune was done, so it is about a week later after the final tune. Uh, it was flashed, and I've had that on there for a while. So, since I did put the final tune, I did have a random dam drop. Um, I, it did not have any significant knock values, nothing. Um, so I contacted Ambot, it took a couple days for him to get back because he's been busy, but um, he did get back to me. He told me to reflash it. Uh, he said it was most likely just a random fluke, an error with the ECU relearn process or something like that. So reflashed it, dam is back up. I've been driving for a couple days now. Um, no knock values. I've been doing pulls even with my AC running. It's the middle of summer here now. It's very warm. It's about 95 degrees today. Um, 
and no issues. So I guess the biggest issue that I've seen with people complaining about eTunes and about um, some reviews I've actually seen about Ambot specifically is people not following the directions, people getting annoyed that they're not getting immediate responses, and they have to understand that this eTune process takes time. You don't have a ProTuner that's sitting there in your car. You're, you're sending logs and this person's basing their decisions, they're basing their information and the tune that they're giving you off of only the information that you're giving them. So if you don't do that process correctly, your eTune is gonna be shit. It's gonna be bad, it's gonna be terrible because you're not giving them the, either the right data log parameters, you didn't follow the instructions, or you're not giving them enough time, you're ignoring their instructions and you're going into full boost as much as possible in all gears, and you're just ruining the process. So if, if you're patient and you do the process correctly, an eTune can be a great, great option that is better quality and more reliable than an OTS. Um, and honestly, this car just feels amazing. So Anthony Ambot, great, great job with this. Thank you for your feedback and all your help with that, that slight hiccup I had. Um, if you watch this, I'm not sure if you will, but I'll send you the link. So um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I'm really happy with the results. The, the power band feels great. Uh, it really rips. Let me, um, it pops on downshifts. It pop, pop, like really pops. So let me, uh, let me see if I can get a couple clips of that. I'll just do a couple pulls here and there and then I'll, I'll sign off, so. Woo 19.14 boost. No knock, 1.0 dam, beautiful. guys that's all I have for you today um, if you're considering an e-tune definitely do research on your tuner um, look into some reviews but make sure that when you're reading reviews you actually pay attention to whether or not that person actually followed the right instructions and did the e-tune correctly um, if you're looking for immediate results within a day or a couple hours do a pro tune um, if you're looking for your best bang for your buck for more reliability and more power, get a T-Tune. If you have a Subaru WRX, I would definitely recommend getting one from Mambot. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about the tuning process, uh, my experience with Mambot or my experience with tuning in general, um, please leave that in the comments. Uh, if not, make sure you guys hit that uh, subscribe button um, like this video and uh, yeah, we will see you guys in the next one.